I'm going to jump into this. You know, I have to say, I think as an audience member, one of the things that makes this movie even better is that obviously we know all the terrible things that are coming because we have seen the the future Omen movies. I'm sort of curious, what do you think Margaret would say about what actually ends up happening in the years to come? Well, who knows? Maybe we'll find out one day. Maybe, maybe not. But um, what do I think she'd say? I don't know. I think she'd be horrified by what what's to come and all the of unfortunately the fatalities that were spawned from, I don't know if I can give a spoiler, but I was about to give a really big one. Um, but <laughs> I knew what you were gonna say. I think you know what I was about to say, thank God I saw myself there. But yeah, I think she'd be absolutely horrified about, about the trajectory that Damien takes. I kinda just wanna see the, the, the Omen trilogy from Margaret's perspective. I feel yeah. like that would be uh, a really cool thing to say. That I really hope cool. someone's like, behind the scenes, right? And they're like, yeah, that sounds really good. Someone's writing that, writing right that there. That's exactly down. right. Um, you know, one of the things that I honestly love most about this movie, I, I grew up on horror movies, I love horror movies, is the fact that you guys go hard with the R rating. Like, you didn't try to to cut back and attempt to get a PG-13. I'm so curious, as an actress, what does an R rating give you that a PG-13 rating does not? Um, uh, there's more freedom, there's more room. I mean, it's always it's always fun to get the most intense rating. It's what we want with a horror film, you know? You want you want to be shocked and rocked and terrified and, you know, it's just fun. It's in, it's enjoyable to push a boundary and and to do the weirdest, most wonderful things you possibly can. And you, unfortunately, you do need the freedom of like the R rating to be able to do those things, you know? We nearly got a worse rating, actually. We nearly got- Really? We nearly got a different rating, yeah. <laughs> I but, think I know why, but I, I'm, I'm very curious. Well, you know, it's funny. I didn't know if it was one. PG-13 or R, and there's a oh, moment no. in the opening scene where I thought, oh, I wonder, this feels either really hard PG-13 or R, and then about 30 minutes in, there was a scene, I was like, oh, this is definitely R. Oh, yeah, it's R, <laughs> big yeah, time. It's definitely, yeah, no question. Um, and as I told you, I'm a huge horror movie fan. I was raised on horror movies. My parents took me to see horror movies as, as a kid, but there are so many great classic horror movie moments that obviously I'm not... Uh, old enough to have experienced it. I really wish I could have been there opening weekend to know what it felt like. What is a scene, a moment from an older horror movie that you wish you could have been there opening weekend to know what it felt like with an audience that didn't know what was going to happen? Oh my God, I would have loved to see the head go 360 in, uh, in, um, in The Exorcist. That would have been sick to see that. Have you ever seen um, the old footage of... The audiences, the first audiences leaving The Exorcist. Yeah, I have seen some pieces of that for sure. That I think is absolutely incredible. I think that would have been great, and then I think the, the shower scene in Psycho. Yeah, would have been, that would have been a real. That's a really good one. That's a really. We could. Really good if, one. I, I would be the the worst to give a time machine to because I would just go <laughs> back and see do. movies. Yeah, Here's I would Johnny be the would lamest. Be great too. Yeah, it would. Ex oh yes, exactly right. That would right. be great. Um, so one of my favorite trivia facts uh, about the original Omen is that when it originally came out back in the 70s, uh, the Catholic Church, obviously not very happy with it. They publicly criticized the movie quite a bit. I'm sort of curious, what do you think the church uh, or the Vatican might say about this film? And do you guys have any sort of plans to put it in front of anyone uh, involved with the church at all? I don't know. I don't know if there are any plans afoot regarding that. Um, they don't tell me anything, so I'm not joking. But... Um... I don't know what they would say. It's a, it's a story, you know? It's just a story. It's here to entertain. It's not, it's not here to offend anybody. And, you know, to do with it what you will. Everybody can take away whatever. If some people choose to be offended by it, that's, that's fine. That's what you do. But all we're, all we're trying to do is just bring a bit of entertainment into the theatre and have people go and, and enjoy. And, you know, that this is, this is the theme of the original Omen, so we had to stay true to that. It would be strange if we veered away and, and, and changed it. So we needed it. We needed to use it. Absolutely right. There's so many people in my life. There are so there are a lot of moments in this movie that I want to watch with someone, and then as this thing is happening, like watch them. Just watch, watch them. It. Yeah. Yeah, which is such like a weird thing to do. But I love doing that with like my love language is watching movies that I love with people that I love. So I want to yeah. watch it. And then are you get there. like one of those people who would be like, do not go on your phone while you're watching this movie with me? I yeah, I am one of those. Annoying... I am too. I like really enforce that. It drives me nuts. I'm like, Long distance off. high five. Long distance high five. <laughs> 
You and me. You and me. Uh, 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 the true movie watchers and wasters of time machines. <laughs> uh, I could talk with you all day. Thank you so much for an amazing conversation and, and absolutely incredible performance. I absolutely. Really appreciate Thank it. you so much. Take care. Bye, guys. Bye. I, I, I want to talk about something that I feel like you, you nail perfectly in this movie and I'm a big fan of, which is that oftentimes the, the scare itself isn't the scariest thing. It's like that 30 seconds leading up to a moment where you know something's going to be scary. Like those are always the ones that really get me. Um, and I was just wanting to talk about sort of crafting those moments, not necessarily like the, the hard hitting scare moments, but like those moments when you kind of start teasing us that something's about to happen, but without revealing what's going to happen yet. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's kind of, I love getting out of a horror movie and actually being physically sore because you're just like holding your, your muscles and your breath the whole time. And I think that's that one thing that we were really um, focused on a lot was pacing just overall in this movie, because I think one of the things that is really was important to us with the entire film was that you you're given a chance to get to know Margaret and you start to care about her and you really start to understand her past and her internal landscape so that you really, you can start to clue into these small things in her reality that start to splinter. And I think we took that idea of, of taking our time with the pacing with character, also with the scares. Um, Cause it's not really a jump scare movie, right? It's more of right. a, a psychological thriller and a slow burn. There is, um, without giving anything away, there is a, a beautiful shot of someone shrouded in darkness who who uh, is burnt a little bit and but like that the way that moment is drawn out i feel like in a lot of other movies that person would have been used for a jump scare and that moment the way you you sort of uh, oh it was fantastic um obviously now that you have the perspective and you know what it looks like to look through the lens and direct an omen movie like you have that feel for it is there a moment from the original film you most would have love to have looked through that lens, seen Gregory Peck on the other side of it, and, and just, just just to kind of have done it yourself. Yeah, totally. Actually, that's a great question. I, You know, this is a moment that actually really scared. I watched The Omen when I was really young, but um, I was terrified by this moment in the bedroom when uh, Gregory Peck's holding Lee Remick in bed. And um, it kind of feels like this intimate moment that you you shouldn't be seeing. It feels like you're spying on them. And she says, I need you to take me to the doctor because I, I don't know if I'm losing my mind or not. And that moment felt so... I, I was never really aware of the concept of losing your grasp on a collective reality. And so that idea as a kid was was far scarier than any of the other violence in the in the film. But also just now that I'm older and, and as a director looking at that scene, I think it was such a brilliant way to make the horror hit home, to, to hear that in such an intimate moment. Um, was, I don't know, I always think about that. I thought about that moment a lot while shooting this film, actually. I, I rewatched it recently and I know exactly, the, that's a great moment, that's actually a great answer. I lo absolutely love that. Um, I, I don't know if this story is true. I, 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 it's a great story, so I hope it is. But I had always heard that Richard Donner wanted to cut at the end of the movie before Damien smiles. And I believe it was the editor on the film who was like, what are you talking about? Like, the smile is the best part. You have to leave the smile in there. And I'm just, and I, I love that story because I think it's a testament to the value of listening to other people and other, having other opinions. And I was wondering if there was a, a moment or a detail on this movie that is the result of, of maybe someone else going, hey, you know, you should maybe do it this way. Oh, gosh. You know, I um, I didn't know that story. That's really interesting. I, I've always heard that, and, you know, it's, it's, it's in the IMDb trivia page. Whether or not it's true is a whole other thing, but it's a great story. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. No, and that's such a great question because I think um, – I think uh, there was so many moments on this where it was really, it, we were wa walking such a tightrope, I feel like, in the construction of the reality and then, and then breaking it down for Margaret. And it was really helpful to have everybody's input on what was, was resonating and what was just confusing because we do have these moments that are, are repressed, they're moments of repressed trauma resurfacing. And then you have moments of her, um, experiencing something that might be supernatural and trying to navigate that was so, it was so great to have a team effort on that side. And then also just, I had such a cool crew that was just really down for the project. And so I think, you know, we had some big swings that 
that are a little nerve wracking to put out in the world. And so to have a bunch of people be like, no, you're crazy, we're doing this, is like, yes, great. <laughs> Thank you. I love that. Yeah. I love that. They're pulling me out here. I, if you can't tell, I love oh, horror movies. And I've got, I've got Jaws there. I've got Michael there, and I have Freddy's glove right there. So yes. I'm, I, I'm a massive fan. So seriously, thank you for taking the time. I truly appreciate no, it. No, thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks. Take care. Bye, guys. Bye. See you later. Where we're going, we don't need roads.